Hey guys, Teresa Barber here with Sippy Couture. Today I'm gonna to show you how we did this really simple paint pour tumbler. These are so easy to make, guys. You can use just regular acrylic paint. You don't have to buy the paint pour sets that they offer. Um, you can just use whatever paints you have on hand. Just add a little water. There's a certain consistency that you need where it will kind of run off of your popsicle stick or, um, or a spoon or whatever you're mixing it up with. And once you get that, you can just layer them right down the cup. It is a lot of fun. You can do it with any color combo, nothing special. I use just basic white and gold paint. Uh, the black, I did use black 3.0 from Cultural, Culture Hustle USA. Um, I just love that paint. It has so much depth to it that it's so pretty. Um, definitely one of my favorite blacks. So I wanted to see how that would play against the gold and it did not disappoint. It's just perfect. So um, I hope you guys like this. Please subscribe, like, let me know if you have any questions um, and show me what you guys make if you guys uh, take a minute to do a paint pour. They're so fun to do. And like I said, any color, and I'd love to see, uh, you know, your take on this. It's so fun, so easy. And um, that's it. We'll get right to it. Not exactly sure how to film this, to be honest with you guys. So um, we're going to try it like this, and hopefully this uh, shows enough. I'm going to scoot this out the way. I have a white tumbler, a white 30-ounce uh, tumbler from Hog. I sanded it really good and then spray painted it white. They, at some point, they did have the 30 ounce Pratt tumblers for the 30 ounce curved, and I can't find them. I'm not sure if they're discontinued or what's going on, but I haven't been able to find them, so I did have to sand that one. All right, for these paints, I I know that they have flow paints, or, well, not flow, but um, well, I guess maybe flow, I don't know, dirty pour paints. I know they have those already. I'm already mixed up and ready to pour. I don't have any, and I didn't want to go run out to the store, so we're just going to use what we have. I have these flow acrylic paints. Um, they do not flow, so we're going to add water to it. I'm going to mix up a good bit because I'd rather have more than, um, I'd rather have too much than not enough. We're doing black, white, and gold for this. I'm like getting to the end of it, so it's like sputtering out of there. All right. Usually whatever's left of the white, if it doesn't get dirty, I dump it back in here. Um, so I can use it again. And I only use this for dirty pours, so it's fine if it gets a little watery because that's the consistency I need anyway. And then we're gonna do gold. Gold is coming out much easier. I did three pretty good pumps of that. And then for black, I don't have a big one in black like that. Um, I have this little guy that I know I don't have enough of. so. We'll do this and then I'm going to go on and use this. Um, ooh, this doesn't even look right. This might be too old to use. I'm gonna go ahead and use my 3.0 black. This black is super, super black. I don't wanna use this. Um, I definitely don't have any other blacks. I do not. I don't know, shoot. All right, this black, it's a perfect, really, really pretty black, but it's also um, somewhat pricey. So I don't love that I have to use it right now, but maybe that contrast against the gold would be really nice. So we'll try it. And I'm gonna show you how much, since these are just paints, I'll show you how much water to mix into it. You see how it kind of drips? You want it so that it gives you almost like a steady stream coming off the, um, you know, when you take it off your popsicle stick, it has like, that's not thick enough. I mean, thin enough. You want it to kind of run off of there. So add water and I don't, um, I do this a lot like I cook. I don't use measurements. I just kind of go until it looks right. Make sure I get all the paint out. Still a little drippy, let's see. I don't want it to drip and I don't want it to kind of clob on there. I want it to give like that, like a nice, where it kind of flows down for a minute. That black 3.0 paint, you have to shake it really, really well for a bit. So I did that beforehand. And then we'll try that. Um, that's about right. You see how it kind of runs off? And then we'll do our white. This is just a um, water bottle that we were done with. And I just added faucet water in there. 
poked a little hole in the top to make it easier. And then I can keep it around here whenever I need water for stuff without it, you know, worrying about it spilling. Mix this one up too. And it definitely needs to be a little more runny so it can flow. Almost. and gold. I'm usually a complete mess with paint everywhere by the time I finish this design. It looks so cool though, so it's worth it. All right, still mixing this through, making sure it kind of gets to that, there we go, close, almost that runny consistency where it would want to flow. If you don't have it where it's um, kind of runs that certain way, it won't want to flow down your cup so easily. There we go. Double check these. All right, if for some reason this doesn't come out the way we want it, we can always wash off these paints and go again. So that would be fine too. We're gonna layer our paint. I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go a lot of black. The black will end up taking over. So we're just doing a little bit of black. Do some white. Probably should have mixed more white, but we'll see how this works out. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to take, I have it on a paper plate to catch all of those drips. I'm gonna take my water and I'm going to kind of just wet the whole cup with water. What this will do is it will give kind of a good surface. It's already wet, so the paint will wanna flow down it. Um, just my way of doing this, guys. Like some people may not do this. <laughs> I just, I don't like it when my paint, you know, kind of gets stuck on that surface. So get some of this cup wet. I'm gonna keep this water. All right. And then we'll start with this pour. What we'll do is um, I don't like to dump it over the top of my cup. I kind of like to let it uh, sit on top and then run down. You know what, let's do one more little bit. I'm a little worried that this may not be enough paint. But we can worry about that when it starts to get on there. All right, so I'll turn my cup upside down and then I put this on and let it sit for a second. Let those paints kind of fall down there and then we'll remove this cup. All right. Encourage those paints to go down a little. And then this part, this first little run of paints going down is always kind of messy, but I do another layer of this. So I'm gonna make sure Everything's flowing down. Take some paint from the bottom and put it back through again. What it's doing right here is it's separating. Like there's a part of the cup that wasn't wet or a bump that's kind of making it avoid the stuff in this area, the cup. So we're gonna encourage that to go down all the way. And this is kind of gives that base paint. That way the whole cup at some point will have paint on it 
this is just kind of the base layers of what's going on next. If you want it to have this really um, abstract look to it, you can leave it like that, but I don't. I like to have big chunks of black and a few other colors running through. Make sure everything has a little spot. And then we're gonna do just a few drops of the different colors. All right, and then I need, need a chair. <laughs> I'm too short, need a chair. And then from the top, I'm gonna go blow, blow straight ooh, down <laughs> directly onto it, kind of a mess. Get paint all over my wall, that's right. Okay, so then we have that going down. And then I'll pick sections where I want it to be a little brighter and then I'll do that again. And from here, I just go until I like the way it looks. I don't want it to have that gray look to it. I want the black to be really, really black in there. So we'll keep messing with it until we get the look that we want. Blow that down again. Okay, and then from here, if you can see the way it's stopping right there, what it's doing is it's pooling against the side. So I always take my, um, grab my spoon, and I lift paint onto the cup to kind of encourage it to touch against there. I could have most likely used a thinner cup to put this on and I wouldn't have a problem with this not wanting to flow. It would um, kind of build up and touch the cup right there and then it would keep a really nice flow going down, but I grabbed the wrong cup. All right, I just tap that right there. So we're gonna cover it up. In any place that is gray, where I kind of don't want that gray, I'm gonna encourage some black to go down from that section. You could just drop it in the middle of the cup like that and it looks like it came from it. It's avoiding this area right here, so make that do what we want. And then take your spots that aren't flowing. Again, if you have any spots that is kind of being avoided on your cup, just get it to go down. Now, one of the things is, you see how it's stopping? Take your popsicle stick and kind of touch it sideways along some of the sides and it will keep pulling it down. It won't have this look as if it got stuck and then you won't end up with big bubble drips on the end. Keep getting this to go. Then I think I want a little more black in here. Right here it's curving like there's something that's stopping it right here not letting it drip straight down so we're gonna fix that kind of pull it out the way is it doing so still take that and encourage that to go down too all right I kind of have like that white and the black round and the black and gold goes over it and I love the way that looks 
these always take on a whole nother life once you get them under epoxy. So we're gonna spend some time just helping this to drip off. Like I said, if I would have used a different cup, cups that are really good for this, you know those character cups that you can get from Walmart? Um, and they're super cheap. They might be like, I don't know, a dollar? Let me see. Oh, yeah, okay. You won't be able to tell what this one is. <laughs> but it's these, they're like these little plastic character cups that they have at Walmart, sometimes in like really, really big bins. Um, those are really, really good for this, and I don't know why I didn't grab that one. Um, I think I was trying to make sure that it was high enough. I usually do go for that one. And then you can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but there's a few bubbles through here that could possibly be popped. So I'm going to take my torch and go super light with this part. You don't want to burn the glue or... Um, burn the paint or try to get it to dry. You just want to pop some of these bubbles. So go through it super quick. And I lost that popsicle stick. And then that's it. We're going to take the rest of this time to just encourage it to fall down. Let's see if I can do this on the side where you can see. See how it kind of grabs it? What this. Like it grabs it and it just encourages it to keep going. See how it kind of takes it from there. So wherever you start to see those bubbles pile up, just take your popsicle stick, hold it sideways and it'll keep moving for you. I usually do this for a bit. After a while, you'll see it stop running so much and that's when um, you just set it aside, you stop messing with this part and you just let it dry. And then you can go on with epoxy. My hand slipped just now and I went up and touched that part, but still the same thing. You can kind of tap it and get the paint to keep running. And this is it guys, like super, super easy, dirty pour. You can do this with any combination of colors. And if you don't want it to have such a mixed look, then drop your colors on one at a time in a pile on top and then kind of blow it. Or uh, if you have any type of air you want to use, use that to um, get it off the edge of the cup. But that's all we have for this part. As always, I like to get my designs done fairly quick. So we're going on with Mr. Nola's Speed Dry Epoxy. Uh, real quick, I did take this outside and I gave it just a quick spray of clear spray paint. Matte is what I had um, closest when I walked outside, so that's what I use. It could be glossy or matte if you do want to seal this. I normally do not seal my dirty pores, but this black 3.0 paint that I use, every once in a while, I feel like for whatever reason, um, it'll want to give me some bubbles, and I don't want that. I want to make sure I have a bubble-free, really good finish on this. This is going to be the first coat. This one will need a decal, but I'm not going to show you guys a decal. Um, and I hate that I have to do this, but the bottom of this tumbler came out so, so pretty. But I do not do the bottom of my tumblers anymore. So I will use my cup edging tool from Wicked Shimmer and trim that off. And I will show you that part and I'll show you the code of epoxy that goes on after that. So you will know how to um, finish up the tumbler. But um, you know, maybe I'll show you the decal because that way I could just do it all in one time. 
I'll do that. I'll show you the decal, that way it can all be done at one time. But I do have to trim off the bottom and the top, which is kind of a bummer because it, it's, it's so pretty. I mean, the bottom really has all the character in it, but I like trimming that off. That way it kind of cuts down on the chance of someone dropping it and it just messing up, um, you know, cracking the epoxy. So we're gonna hit this with a torch. This epoxy is really, really good at not having any bubbles, but being that this is going on this black paint, I wanna make sure that this is flawless. Like this is a bubble-free, really easy, clean, clean, clean coat. So we're gonna hit it with a torch just to encourage those bubbles to pop. A lot of the time, these, these bubbles really do just come out and pop on their own. So um, I really don't have to even do this step with this epoxy most of the time, I just, going against black paint you will see any type of imperfection that you have right there so that's um that's done we're gonna let this sit love this epoxy we can go on in about two to three hours and do us uh, we can sand it and then get the decal on there so um i mean that's that makes it pretty quick right two to three hours how easy is that so we'll let this spin and then we'll be back with decals Okay, you guys are gonna think that I'm sort of crazy, but I'm actually not gonna show you the decal for this part. Uh, this one is gonna be a Father's Day present for someone and I'm waiting to find out um, what exactly she wants on this. Uh, we had a plan, but I think we changed our mind on that. So I'm just gonna show you how I wrap up the ends and then I'll just show you the picture of this, like the final coat. This is the bottom that we're gonna be trimming off. And I almost hate that it came out so pretty and I feel like that's almost the star of the show, but at the same point, I really like my tumblers having a clean, clean edge. That way, you know, if it is dropped, it's kind of protected. Um, besides that, there's so many times I've tried to do the edge. Um, and after a while, I just got tired of fighting with it. So what I'm doing is, um, sorry, fighting with getting it leveled. My head's all over the place right now. So I have my cup edging tool from Wicked Shimmer. And it comes with these little braces, these washers, so you can raise and lower how you want the blade. What I do is I have a paring knife and I put it inside of, um, just under that, under the black piece. I'm kind of thinking, I, I know I tell this to you guys all the time, but just in case this is your first time catching one of my tutorials, um, I put this blade in here just for this knife, just for a little more stability whenever I'm rotating it around. So what you do is you just set your tumbler on the cup edging tool and rotate it in a circle. You put, um, depending on how much epoxy you have is how much pressure you're gonna have to apply. This is just a paint in one coat of epoxy, so it should cut through pretty quick. This will cut through um, glitters, vinyl, any type of fabric. If you wanted to get a clean edge on any of those designs, it's definitely possible. So what we're gonna do is now that I have that trimmed off, I'm gonna go around and loosen that epoxy from the edge of the tumbler. That way where I trimmed off, it's a lot easier to clean up. It is such a bummer. It is such a bummer to get rid of this, but <laughs> that's how I finished my tumbler, so we're gonna keep going. This is a cool thing about that black 3.0 glitter is um, uh, paint, is look how dark that is. It looks like velvet. When it's dry, it looks like velvet. It is so pretty, but it gives us really gorgeous black, um, a really shiny black. It's really pretty with epoxy on it. So we have that trimmed, and we're going to carefully take away that layer of epoxy we just put on. And this has been somewhere right around that two or three, well, probably three hour mark, because um, I was struggling with a cup. <laughs> it was a marble that I painted um, a few times. And I usually knock that out pretty good, and I don't know, it's been a bit since I did it, so I got to fight with that for a few hours. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trimming away this layer of epoxy. And depending on how set your tumbler is, is gonna kind of be how easy it is to remove that. I'm trying to be careful because I won't be able to take a picture of this cut for you guys and really show it to you even though I'm not finishing it all the way. I don't wanna mess it up. I'm just gonna go around. And we're being really careful to not get our knife inside where it's trimmed off. There we 
go. And then we're going to take our dry baby wipe and some acetone and we're going to clean this up. Let's get the bottom first. If you don't have a baby wipe, you can use any sort of napkin and acetone that is really good for removing paint. If it's really stubborn, then you can use magic eraser and acetone and that will come right up. It's really good for cleaning the inside of your tumblers too. All right, get that all clean. I'm gonna get a new one so that I don't drag that paint anywhere. And then we're gonna go right along this inside piece. I almost have to figure out how to hold this for you guys to show you because I'm so used to keeping my cup on a different angle. Let's see if I can hold it like that anyway. So you're going right inside this line and you're just cleaning it up. There we go, this could work. Turn my baby wipe to the other side so that paint doesn't smear. Using this acetone on top of this epoxy, if it's too, um, if your epoxy is too fresh, you do run the risk of kind of um, getting that epoxy to um, like peel away a little. So be careful, make sure your epoxy has been on there for a bit. This bead dry goes so quick. So this is definitely enough time to work close with it, but just be careful if you're using um, other brands with your acetone next to your epoxy because you can completely mess up your epoxy. I'll make sure I get close to that. Okay, and then if this was something where it was going to be, where's my rubbing alcohol? If this is something I was going on with my next final coat, then I would take, um, or the next coat of epoxy, I would take just a, um, a sanding sponge. You can even use, uh, what is this? Just a wet or dry sandpaper. You can use that and just soften your, soften your edge right there. And that way, whenever you bring your next layer of epoxy down, you'll kind of curve it along the end of the tumbler a little and that will help to reseal where we just trim that off. So we're gonna take just some alcohol real quick, wipe around that, get it cleaned up. And there we go, we have a really clean bottom of the tumbler. There we go, that's what the finished result would look like, that end result on the bottom of the tumbler, just a really clean, nice edge, um, nothing on the bottom. I don't put a logo or a sticker on the bottom of my curved tumblers. I just can't find a way for it to sit in there nicely um, without it taking away or me having to do the bottom. So these curved tumblers do not get a logo. For the top, what I normally do, a lot of the times I'll take my, um, my Dremel and my flap wheel and I'll go along the rim of the tumbler to give me, um, to like kind of push the paint back and give me a decent little line there. I don't like doing that with paint just because it's so, um, it's not as thick as glitter on there and it's a little, um, it's a little, I feel like it's a little more risky at times to mess that up, to really dig into that paint. So I trim, I gently trim that away because if you go too harsh with your knife right now, you can um, pull up some paint that's right there. So we take that and then we just slightly curve our hands around the edge of the tumbler and go around a few times just to give 
a softened edge. Kind of pull the um, paint back a little and that will help to give you just a clean area whenever you go reseal it. And do that a few times and then you would be ready to do either decal or final coat or whatever however you want to finish this off. But um, that's a dirty pour. That's about how easy it is. Uh, definitely need to get this thing washed up, get some of the glitter from this mat that got stuck to here <laughs> off of this. But um, that's it. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys liked it and it helps um, answer how to get that dirty pour done without having to buy the paints um, that are already mixed. You just add a little water. Like I said, you want to get that consistency where it kind of runs off of the popsicle stick or the spoon or whatever you're using to mix it. Um, so that's it, guys. Hope you liked it. Hope you found it helpful. And I'll see you guys soon.